Hello everybody, George Freakan over here at Big Data London, live from the Light Zone Data Show. And very happy to be here with Clarence Rosario, who's Director of Product Management at Zoho. Yeah. Thanks for having me, George. It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, it's my pleasure, and thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. Now, I'm very curious, how do you see the evolution of conversational AI sort of taking shape and influencing business intelligence and impacting that future? So conversational analytics is something that is going to be very important in the way that BA is going to evolve, it, right? The previous generation was more of a UA-driven thing where people used the interface mm -hmm. to slice and dice data and get yeah. insights. But with the latest LLMs and the generative AI models coming into picture where natural language conversation is becoming a kind of a very in thing, right? I see that is going to be adopted more and more closer in the BA context where the users, if they have to be empowered by insights, they should not be bogged down with complexity of data and models. Can they use a simple interface like chat to converse in a natural language and get insights, right? Right. So that's going to be very critical if we have to empower businesses with insights because if they have to have insight, they have to get access to the system and the conversation interface can be a great enabler that. So it's going to be a parallel universe inside the BA context where con interface might become even the primary interface through mm -hmm. which users might interact with data and get insights. So like how you and me are chatting right now, I could be chatting with Zoho Analytics and asking it how my data is doing, what information I can exactly. extract out of it. Yeah. I see a future where a uh, user comes in, right? Uh, they don't have to get into a dashboard, look at insights, yeah. right? They just have a chat board. They cast asking questions, right? Say, how, did, how was my business yesterday? It gives me an answer. And say, you can ask a follow-up question saying, why did it happen like that? It might give you another answer. And you might say, I want to send this report to us, an email to my colleague. It will just trigger an email automatically. So oh, everything wow. completely done through a, a chat window, yeah. right? Without even, even defining what you want to analyze. Just an ad hoc way of trying to converse as I converse with you and get insights. So that's the, that's the future I see in terms of how analytics is going to be enabled with conversation interfaces. Beautiful. Yeah, it's really going to enable that data democratization exactly. even more. Exactly. So, and in my opinion, self-serve BI no, is yeah. going to become the norm for many organizations, right. and especially those that want to democratize that right. data. Right. But, you know, there will be challenges along the way, and what do you think some of those challenges would be and how can we overcome them, especially to make sure that this, this is done successfully for the non-technical staff? I would call out a couple of challenges there. One is the in terms of the data management layer, because what you get as good data is what is, defines the type of analysis that you can do, right? Yeah. If the quality of the data that is getting inside the system is not going to be robust or good or healthy, right? Whatever, even if you expose the data to all the users inside the organization, that is not going to be reliable in terms right. of the insights and what they can do. So you have to have a very strong data management and a governance layer which will give you high quality modeled data that can be taken up by users to analyze. That's point number one. Point number two is it's not about just having quality data but also the business metrics that you want to analyze, right? Is it standardized and defined properly? What they call as a metrics layer, right? Mm -hmm. Or a semantic layer. If it is not well structured and defined in a consistent model, right? You might do an analysis for a win rate which might be something different from what I analyze as win rate, right? So there are two interpretations for the same data. Is it standardized? Are, the, are my KPI definitions standardized and exposed to my end users? So that's on the data level in terms yeah. of quality. The other aspect is in terms of adopting AI. Now as I talked about in my previous uh, thing about conversational interface, right? It is one thing that we can expose a conversational interface, but if the conversational interface is not well trained, then I cannot converse in the language that I know. The, the, the conversational interface has to understand the language that I can talk. So it needs a kind of a training for the conversational interface to really be more impactful when the uh, business users start using it. So AI models itself has to be trained to be adopted for a self-service kind of a world and then gets into more and more deeper in terms of can I build more and more sophisticated models which will make it easy for people to analyze. Right? So there are challenges at the data management layer, data quality, metrics definition, even adoption of AI to become more prominent from a self-service aspect of it. For so sure. These are challenges that I see that has to be overcome if, if an organization has to be enabled much more. Mm -hmm. Although the tools are good enough now, but still needs that kind of a uh, next layer of fine tuning and enable it to make it happen right, much more right. effectively. Oh, beautifully said, and I love how that future looks and the capabilities also that Zoho, I know, is bringing to the table and is getting us in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, 
from what I've noticed, there are some companies that they can't afford to invest in their own data science teams or their data analysts. And because of that, they're sticking more to traditional analytics. Right. How would AI and machine learning create those capabilities for prescriptive analytics, predictive analytics for companies? One thing that is happening clearly is basically there are quite a lot of standardized ML models that are coming to the beam. Right? Yeah. You don't have to build models for everything. So yeah. Only if you build models, you need a data scientist, you need a code, right? So there are standardization of models because of the way that it has been developed and used more and more, right? And especially BA vendors like us are, are trying to adopt those models inbuilt into the platform. So you don't have to write a forecasting model. You don't have to write a model for anomaly detection. There are pre-packaged models that are available in the system. You just have to configure and maybe fine tune that to adopt it to your layer. So that is something that is happening very rigorously in terms mm -hmm. of pre-packaged ML models and AA models coming. And the other thing is even the natural language querying interface, the conversation interface, which is once again has a very well laid foundation in the BA product. It is just that you have to train the system to more, be more sophisticated in terms of how it can give you the outputs. So the BA vendors are adopting AA more and more in such a way that it becomes pre-packaged. You don't have to do much. You don't have to be a data scientist to adopt it. But there is a layer where above which you will find that the pre-packaged ones are not good enough for you to customize and do it. That's where a data scientist or a, or a developer might have to come in. There again, if you have to build your own ML model, there are two different models. One is you can use an, a no-code way of building models, what they call as auto ML, mm -hmm. an automated machine learning. The other is a pro code where you have to really be a developer, right? Right. So the auto ML is like a self-series model building framework, like the way self-series B is going. So that's also getting very, very powerful, so that you don't have to be a data scientist. If you have some basic knowledge of what an AA might look mm -hmm. and what is the outcome, you can use that no-code uh, assistant right. to even build models like that. Right. So as the technology is rapidly evolving, the need for being a specialist data scientist might be necessary, but not mandate. Right. Okay, if you want to really analyze yeah, data yeah, through yeah. AI. That's yeah. obviously it. So if, more and more, we're going to see this in the hands of non-technical individuals. Exactly. exactly, exactly. What about really embedding some of these analytical features yeah, yeah. into the current applications without disrupting the workflow? Yeah. Do you think that would be possible? See, one important thing, if you want to really enable people with insights and actions, it has to be delivered in the context of where people are already working. That's true, okay? yeah. They might be using a CRM application, they might be using an IAM channel like Microsoft Teams or Slack. So why should I expect the user to come to a BA platform to consume insights, yeah, right? Yeah. So You're, if you want to empower them, you have to give them insights contextually into where they are already working, right? right. Otherwise so, you're creating that extra step for them. Exactly, and, that's creates friction, hurdles, yeah. bottlenecks, yeah. you have to learn a new system. It's, it's yeah. quite a lot of tedious yeah. things. So, that, that's why embedded is going to be very, very critical. And vendors are also evolving to that direction, right? where they are empowering developers or business developers to take up the BA platform, mm -hmm. rebrand, or maybe completely embedded as part of their solution offering in a very seamless manner. So if you are looking at a CRM system, you might be a sales guy, right? As you are looking at sales data, you might want to look at an insight of a particular customer, which might be powered by the BA system at the back end. So you can look at a nice chart of a customer which will give you this entire sales chain of the customer or account. Contextually inside the con inside the form of a particular CR. So that's how I can make it so easy and embedded inside the an existing application. Not only that, it's not just about looking at reports and dashboard, you can also have a conversation interface embedded right there. So that you can interact with the data inside from the application that you're using. It could be your CRMs or it could be even your Microsoft Teams where Mm -hmm. You're interacting with Microsoft Teams, you can have a chatbot for BI where you can start conversing with the conversational interface which will interact with the backend on the backend through a BA system and get insights right there where you're working. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to come to the BA system. So that's how embedding is going to really play a role, getting blended into wherever you are already working. Yeah. And this is something that we call as a push down intelligence, pushing intelligence to where people are already working. Okay. I, so I love that. It really yeah. emphasizing what users already know and what they're familiar with. Exactly. And enhancing that, providing them with more useful information. Exactly. Exactly. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a critical enabler if we want people to be enabled with insights. Yeah. Yeah. That's sage words. Thank you so much, Clarence, for yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for putting the lights on such an important topic. And where can people find out more about Zoho? Yeah. You can go to our website, zoho.com/analytics. You can learn more about us. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's Thanks been a, a lot, pleasure. George. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.